Welcome back, Santa Clarita Valley. We're here on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220, with Deputy Josh Dubin, Deputy Jonathan Wilson, and Deputy Regina Yost. That's the best one by that's far. Best that's, right. that's the best intro said, by far. Building up to a <laughs> that's like an eight. Wouldn't you say perfect hair? Yeah. Oh, he's he gives a thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. Yeah. All right. That's about as <laughs> yeah. As much expression as we need from you, perfect hair. Right. Yeah. Easy. You guys don't know, he's turning red on? back there. He's turning red. These guys are king support. Oh, yeah. It's king support, so you got to Kings respect, one respect the L.A. sports fan. Um, yeah, we were just talking about uh, what the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station is doing for the summer. Summer crime, T3s, curfews, operations. What's going on? Are you doing saturation patrols for uh, curfew violations? or We are. We're going we're gonna to start doing that. We're going to do a little bit more evening and nighttime patrol. Um, as you know, in the city of Santa Clarita, there's a municipal code, along with L.A. County in general. Yeah. There's a there's county codes regarding underage people out past 10 p.m. It's funny. We actually just had at the city council meeting, there was a high school student that got up and spoke and asked questions about the curfew and, and questioned that. But uh, as far as what you guys do... Um, it's just kind of making sure kids aren't doing anything uh, like loitering, upsetting business, uh, you know, being a distraction, right? Doing right. anything they're not supposed to be doing, of basically. course. And you know, the sheriff's department and law enforcement enforces the laws. laws that are on the books. I gotcha. And um, we, you know, when we do these type of curfew operations and when we do evening patrol, we're looking for for people that are doing what they're not supposed to be doing. Right. You know, if you're coming from work or you're, you know, you're you're legitimately, you know, coming from a, a city sanctioned event, a school event, an event where there's supervision for the minor child, then that's one thing. But, you know, when you're out partying with your friends or it's, you know, now midnight, one o'clock in the morning and, and there's in the other type of that. parking lot or, and there's, or, or a parking lot you're not supposed to be in mm-hmm. anyway. We'll just say generically. Right. <laughs> you know, that's that's a different story. So right. um, just extra enforcement. We're gonna just be adjusting our hours a little bit, working in the in the evening and you know it stays lighter longer summertime and so we're going to be doing a little bit of that along with a couple other different things um just to you mention you know, t3s right the t3s i believe hometownstation.com had a video up of you me explaining the t3 and you some of the different the training. features and you know we use those uh, oftentimes it's difficult to get a full-size crown victoria in the in the south fork trail and in the paseo so those are electric clean energy vehicles that are able to utilize, you know, the paseos and the trails, and um, and most importantly, they're silent, right? And so they're silent, creep up right? Up they have lights and siren headlight. Um, so we're able to give that, and you know, when we we have two of them at the station, and when we use it, those T three devices, uh, we get a lot of positive feedback from people that are running, you know, bicycling, that are out on the on the not trails from and you. the paseos. <laughs> no, not from they they <laughs> stop us and they you know, hey, it's great, let us check it out, and and we'll show them, you know. The device and and people really like it so i've never been on a t3 can we change that is that possible we could talk about it except we're talking about training we, we might have to submit a formal request you guys actually do a, a training for the specific to the t3 right do you, right you've done that what's that like right it utilizes you know the safety features of it you know the oper the general overall operation of it um, some of the features that it has on it, and then our department has a specific training that you have to go through in order to be a deputy that utilizes one. Just like some of our deputies are on bicycles, you, you'll see those in the paseos and the trails, um, and some of our hiking trails, bicycles and off-road motorcycles. Each device that we have has a specific specialized training program that you have to go through before you're able to use one of those. And, and speaking of summer crime enforcement, I know um, crimes of opportunity also tend to pick up um, while people are on vacation, right? People are mm-hmm. away. We talk a little bit about that and what, what people can do to not be a victim. Because that's one thing we try to do with the show, too, is let people know you know what they need to know. Yeah, well, notice during the summertime, too, a lot of people take trips and... Um a lot of people are still leaving stuff in the vehicles. I'm still reading reports on a consic- you know, constant basis where people are leaving their purses in the front seat. They're leaving electronics on the back floorboard. Um, you know, I don't know how much more we can stress. Please do not leave stuff out. And for people who aren't aware, there's Nixle reports that the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station puts out every week that lets people know what, what kind of crimes are going on in their neighborhood, trends, um, kind of analysis. What You know, if you see a lot of something, you'll put that in there so people can be a little more careful. Yeah, I put that statement in there probably regular basis for Valencia area because I'm, I'm still it almost seeing always it. Applies. It, does, it doesn't go away. You know, it, it might drop from maybe five reports to two reports, but it still stays consistent every week. With vacations, you know, if you're going to leave for vacation, you can always call the Sheriff's Station. We can do vac- 
uh, vacation checks in your neighborhood. Oh, really? Uh, I advise that you lock your door, secure everything, put extra boards in between your windows. Um, you know, just and and tell your neighbors tell, where yeah. you're going. If you're close with your put neighbors, put some motion. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't like your neighbor, your neighbor, you might not want to know you're going to be gone for a right. week. But yeah, lock your back gates. Hopefully, That's another right. thing Whatever out here is do. we're finding gates aren't locked. Mm -hmm. You know, and tell me about this good. vacation check. I've never heard of that. It seems like an appropriate time. Um, so would you call the station and say? Is There's people website? going in the neighborhood? It is. Oh, so well, I will website. tell you yeah. about it. And when uh, Deputy Yost mentioned tell your neighbors last night, uh, about 6 o'clock at night, I had a knock on my own door, and it was my neighbor saying, hey, we're going to Maui for two weeks. Just wanted to you know, let you know and keep an eye on our house, and, and we're going to tell all the neighbors. So that actually is a good idea. So now if I see you know, a Some couch weird. coming out of the front window, <laughs> then yeah, that's probably yeah. a... That's that would raise questions, anyways. Well, I would think if you saw it coming through the uh, <laughs> through the front window, right? But <laughs> as opposed go, to the door, if you go to santa clarita dot com um, on their website, and we also have it on our website, which is www santa clarita dot lasd dot org. Um, on the left hand side, towards the middle of our website, it says e service, and it has a little city logo on it. If you click on that, there's a tab inside there that says vacation check, and you fill out this little questionnaire. Um, and then it gets forwarded to the city and to us, and that we're able to dispatch. Oftentimes, it's our volunteers on patrols or our reserve deputies, and they will go by um, at different given times and do vacation checks of your house. And they'll log those checks in our computer system, make sure that they don't see any you know, open doors, windows, any suspicious people in your driveway. Awesome. And they did very extensive checks, too. I know right. they walk around the whole house, check right. the back doors, make sure everything's locked, all the windows are shut. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, of course, there's no charge for this. You just have to let us know when to do it and when to stop doing it and what times you prefer, and that's all online. Okay, great. So. Well, that's good to know. We have to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more Neighborhood Watch on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220. Welcome back, Santa Clarita Valley. We're here on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220, every first and third Thursday of the month. We're doing the Neighborhood Watch with Deputy Josh Dubin. Deputy Jonathan Wilson and Deputy Regina Yost here from your Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station Crime Prevention Unit, and we are talking summer crime. Wow! That just comes? rolled off your tongue. <laughs> Bam! Did I get a little? Do I get points for going? Yeah, that, the was, good. that was good. That was good. All right. So yeah, talk to me about um, what's going on. We were just talking about crimes of opportunity and vacation checks that you can request um, through the the Sheriff's Department website at SantaClarita.lasd.org. Yes, right? www.SantaClarita.lasd.org. It's also on the city's website which is santa-clarita.com. Okay. And um, just what, what else do we um, see when we're out on the streets, Deputy Ellis? Um, also, what I, I'd like to mention, too, is um, we're seeing a little bit of crimes occurring in the local gyms. I'm not going to say which gyms, but, right. you know, all the gyms out here seem to be having an issue with, um, you know, victims are leaving stuff in lockers and coming back to find out that their locker combo has been cut or has been tampered with, and the stuff inside the locker is now gone. One thing I see a lot of at my gym, which is uh, Wait a really unusual. Hold the phone. Okay, let's, let's not make the fairy <laughs> goes to the gym <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I'm just going to slow you down. We all need some time right or right another there. at yeah. a gym. Okay, yes. go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Not, not, you know, today or okay. recently, but, you know, one thing I've seen before at the gym, Deputy Josh Dubin. Go ahead. Is that people will leave stuff in the locker and not lock it up, just assume that, you know, oh, hope that's that going to uh, that's 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 go in the lock. And, and it's just like, just, man, that is true about that stuff, I guess. Yeah. Because then they wonder where their stuff went. Yeah, it's like saying, here, you take this. We partner up, you know, Know, us deputies partner up with the uh, owners at the gyms, and we tell them, you know, hey, we got a trend. We've noticed X amount of reports coming out of your gym. What are you doing about it? Um, you know, they're trying to inform their, you know, the patrons there that please lock your stuff up. You know, another thing is people don't want to leave their stuff in the lockers because maybe they've been a victim of the locker theft, and then they leave it in the car, which is just as bad. So what we advise is, you know, women, you know, they seem to target females. Um, take your purse with you, secure it in the trunk. Don't bring a purse. Maybe just bring a little wallet with you. Um, if you have a locking uh, compartment in your vehicle, put it in there. Um, don't carry around a big bag because they're watching. And like I tell all the people, you know, they see when the women are stuffing the stuff under the, the floorboards and all that. And that's where they seem to target the back windows. 
Also, if you see somebody walking into your gym with bolt cutters, probably want to let management know. Maybe yes, <laughs> right. That's yes. an idea. Because how are people getting through these locks? I mean, I, I guess you could. I'm pick thinking them they're probably you... putting stuff in their gym bag and walking through. You know, there's no metal detectors in the gym, mm -hmm. so Plus, you, you, you know, don't they know. wear backpacks yeah. coming in. You right. don't know dress the part, exactly. wear a backpack, got all their tools in there. Hmm. Some are real good with the combo locks and. Have okay. To get those okay. Open. And anything else we can talk about as far as crimes opportunity or people should things people should know with someone coming up. Besides from wear sunscreen, if you look like me. Well, like I said, there will be a lot of people partic participating and going to the mall this summer. So again, you'll see a lot of the, you know, the mommy and me club start going out there, and they're going to be taking the strollers out with the kids. Don't leave your stroller unsecure with your kid just because you're in that play area. There's going to be a lot of people. There's you know another crime of opportunity. They see a bag, diaper bags, anything. A lot of women put their wallets in the diaper bag. Don't leave it out where they can see it. Deputy Yoshi she just reminded me of something. We do this story every year also, so I just want to bring it up, and, and you guys can talk about this. But uh, people leaving pets in the car, especially when it gets right. hot. Yes, yes. We every just had a call year on we do that story. That. And I just saw it in the news. It, it didn't happen here, in, per se, but it was somewhere else. But, of course, you know, it's hot here. Um, how many calls... I mean, every summer, right? That oh, we a get a, we get a number of calls every Lots. summer, and oftentimes the fire department, the LA County Fire Department, will be dispatched with us. Um, and you know, it we've had calls ranging from a dog, cat, bird left in a hot car to a baby left in a hot car. Jeez. Um, and I know, in my I don't know, six seven years of patrol now, I've broken some windows to to free a, an animal or a child out of a hot car because it I don't know what the statistics are off the top of my head but it's just a matter of minutes before that car is boiling I, I inside. I believe you can check the, the the internet but I printed out a paper because I arrested a guy for leaving his dog in the car and um, it's animal cruelty. Right, I was it just going to say there's no, a charge at 80 for that. degrees in 10 minutes it's a, over 100 something degrees in the car Jeez. just at 80 degrees outside. And that's in the shade in the sun it's a completely different I don't even know what it gets but it's it's you yeah, can well, check because the internet, glass. it's it's really right. really hot in that car. Yeah. It doesn't let also, any heat with out. that, we just got a call yesterday where somebody had their kids locked in there. I mean, even if you think you're just going to run in real quick, it's it's just not a smart idea to leave your and kids. Those kids yeah. will push that lock button and then and exactly. lock all four of your doors, and your keys are sitting there dangling. Yeah, it's right. actually happened to yeah. Yeah. So, somebody I know. It's not a good. No, and they laugh at you, and it's getting hot, and they don't yeah. know how to unlock it. They hit it on accident, so. Yeah. Right. And not to say, I mean, also leaving your kids in a, in a car unattended is also probably not, oh, yeah. not Shame on you right. for that yes. recommended action. Yes, I agree. Um, so thank you. I wanted, wanted to definitely talk about that. But uh, there was something else um, that had caught my attention. Going around the news a lot, and again, not per se in this area, but this area certainly uh, wouldn't be immune to it because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an app that's kind of growing in popularity up here, and that's Uber. Um, Deputy Dubin, you've heard about this. So you can tell I us have. a little bit about, describe what Uber is for people who might not know. So we're not we're not bagging on any particular company, and we're not endorsing any particular oh, company. Oh, right. This is really just about awareness. Right. The reason why I think that you brought this up, and correct me if I'm wrong, is because there's many different services, whether it be a sober friend, a taxi cab, or a service like Uber or Lyft or something like that, that will get you home sober. And I think that that's important, especially around, you know, it stays light. We, we talked about that. Summertime stays lighter longer. Um, there's more opportunity to go out, enjoy yourself, have some drinks. Um, so, I digress. Getting it back, uh, Uber and Lyft and, and different services like that are services based on an app on your phone. And the, the, obviously, it's a free app. You download the app and you register. So, I'm Perry Smith. I put in my credit card number and then the app, you turn it on. Now, it will use your GPS location. So, if we turned it on right now, it would GPS you here to the hometownstation.com studio. And it's also registered with your home address, right? When you sign up one of these accounts. I've heard your, that. your billing address okay. of your credit card. Okay. So, you can request then via the app. You can click on send me a ride, basically. Um, and there's different services. You could click on send me a ride and quickly... And conveniently, that ride will show up at your location. Now we have to take a quick commercial break on the cliffhanger storytelling, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. We're gonna talk a little bit more about what happens with Uber and how uh, not just Uber, but these types of apps can be used for good and can have um, some consequences if you're not careful. So uh, stay with us. We'll be back on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220.